if you love long distance events, allocate the next 15 minutes to watch this. An utterly staggering lineup for this men's 5,000. Nicholas Kip Korea, fastest man in the world this year, won the Rome Diamond League just off the podium in Tokyo. Can he go one better? Oscar Chalimo, world junior cross country bronze three years ago, then to Sam Parsons of Germany. Mukhtar Idris, looking to become a three time champion, joining Mo Farah in that bracket. He hasn't looked at his best this season, but what a perfect time to turn it on. Jakob Ingebrigtsen, the Olympic champion over 1,500 metres, smarting after silver in that event. Watch for him. Mark Scott of Great Britain, very good half marathon runner and is a 3.35, 1,500-metre runner. Borrega's the Olympic champion over the 10,000 metres, now stepping down. Silver in this event in Doha. Trevalia of Guatemala into the final with his good friend, Hadi Hamed Nur. Third in the national championships. Yomif Kajelcha, world indoor record holder at the mile and a double world indoor champion. Grant Fisher, the third fastest man in history indoors over this distance. He was just off the podium in the 10,000 behind this man. Joshua Cheptegei, the Olympic 5,000 meter champion, is now the double world champion over the 10,000. A brilliant, brilliant run in the 10. Can he do the double? Mo Ahmed was just behind Cheptegei for Canada in the Olympic Games in this event last year. And Daniel Ebenyo was fifth behind Cheptegei in the 10,000 metres. This is a crazy lineup. The Olympic 10,000 metre champion stepping down. The 1,500 metre champion from Tokyo stepping up and awaiting them both. The man who stormed to the historic gold over 5,000 last year. All three of them are proven champions. Only one will reign tonight. An epic final taking place over the old-fashioned distance of three and a bit miles. How the late, great Steve Prefontaine would have loved this lineup and would have loved the chance to race alongside three Olympic champions. I mean... As, as a script ahead of a final, Dan, it's pretty unusual in any cycle of four years to have three current Olympic champions all going up against each other and all with an equal case for being good enough to take this title. It's a unique situation here over the 5,000 metres. These fans love it, absolutely. You know, they get a little anxious when they're seeing nothing but straightaway events and field events. They want these athletes to run some laps. That's when the fans really come alive. And I think when you think about planning a, a major championship here in this stadium, the directors, they want to hear a sound. And they only really hear that sound when the distance races go on. And it's, I think one of the things that makes Eugene so special is the fact that they are very knowledgeable fans. But... They love distance running probably more than anything else in this town. And we will both just go quiet for a moment so you can listen to the noise greeting these men after only two laps. Listen to this. That is incredible. An incredible amount of noise and it shows you exactly what Dan O'Brien's just been indicating that this crowd are hugely knowledgeable and passionate when it comes to distance races. Now chapter guy, 205 at 800 meters. This is a decent pace. I don't think it's in his interest to let this dawdle. We very much enjoyed the women's five yesterday, Dan. And because it was so slow and tactical, it played into the hands of Gudaf Sege, the 1500 meters specialist, who was too good for all the wonderful female athletes who also stepped down from the 10,000 meters. He's got to make this an honest pace, and he is. What are we there? 236. It's low 13s, and that's why they're a little bit strung out. Of course, he's capable of running much faster but he's not dawdling, and I think that's quite significant. 
Well, and you know with Grant Fisher up there near the lead pack, he's going to always try to keep an honest pace. He came through the mix zone after the qualifying rounds, and he said he had to keep it an honest pace. Too many guys were going to get an opportunity to, to have a sprint finish. Cheptegei having a little look over his shoulder. Honestly, the noise here. I hope, um, I know our sound crews are desperately fiddling around with the buttons to try and ensure that you get a, a true flavour of this. I'm having to turn my levels up and down in the commentary box because the noise is so loud up here in the stands. It's absolutely breathtaking considering that they're coming round now and they've still got nine laps to go. Cheptegei now relinquishes the pacemaking duties. Looks to me like that's uh, Jacob Krop of Kenya now. Sixth in Doha, fifth in the world indoors. And Jakob Britson in the middle of that pack. He's the distinctive tall figure in the bright blue with the streaks of red for Norway. Abenyo just coming wide on the outside. So Cheptegei's done his job. A little bit of a headwind they're running into there. You can tell by the way the vests are fluttering across their shoulders. Kip Career is in second place. He's the fastest man in the world this year with that very, very good run. Fantastic run and a great race in the Diamond League in Rome. Kopp was second in that race, uh, which is why he's the second fastest man in the world this year. You can make a case, I know you can always say any, any finalist, anybody qualifying for a final on the track or the field is good enough to win it. But this is so hard to predict, Dan, such as the strength and depth. You could make a very, very good case for seven or eight of these men to be joint favourites for the gold. This is absolutely wide, wide open. Well, and here at the beginning of the race as well, what did we see the Ethiopian women doing? All three of them up there controlling the pace blocking for one another and now we see the Kenyans all working together and you know there are no rabbits in championship racing but there are some sacrificial lambs and a lot of team tactics 241 they slowed on that second kilometer the first was about 235 236 and that's why Kip Korea has gone to the front and on the back straight there I'm not sure whether you noticed Ebenyo was just waving his right arm gesturing for others to come forward and help with the pacemaking duties. There he is with 15 on his thigh. Daniel Abeyo, who wasn't too far away from the podium in the 10,000 metres. Cheptegei, the reigning champion, just has a little look over his shoulder on the left of picture there with Inga Britson paying close attention. And you know what? I haven't mentioned Salomon Borrega once. He is a very, very canny racer. He's amongst the smallest in that field. He's just in front of Mohamed Ahmed of Canada, right in the centre of your picture, just behind Cheptegei, who's got that vest. And look at that, Inga Britson has just run into... Yeah, he's just run into about lane five or six to get a drink. And while he was doing that, he was gesturing to the crowd to make more noise. So he's now tucked back in, and we saw him doing that in the heats so long ago. Now, I can't remember if you were sitting alongside me, but... Inka Britson, Dan, was pushing his arm up, wanting more noise from the crowd, and I think he was doing it in the back straight. Well, after the 1,500 metres, he gave Jake Whiteman his due, but he said he was embarrassed by that silver medal. Said that he thought that he should have run better, but he just didn't look like he, he took the, didn't have the sting in his legs that he normally does in the last 200 metres. And he has just run... Very, very close to Steve Cram's European record over the mile in Oslo. And the longer, the longer this pace goes on as a steady rather than a fast tempo, the more and more likely it is that it plays into his hands. Now he's coming across once again for a drink. It's obviously very, very hot. It's unusual for these guys to take a drink in a 5,000 metres. Cheptegei did the same. Discards the drink now. And one or two heels getting clipped. Ibenyo just had to put his arms out there as if to say, right, hang on, I don't want to fall. Gravalia loves leading. Now he's tucked in on the inside. And Inga Britson now in second place. Grant Fisher still going well. 
He was bidding to become the first American to win a medal in that event. And he was just off the podium in the tent, finishing in fourth place. And this, this is steady again. No one's really prepared to do the work here, and that's why there hasn't been anyone dropped from this group. 8.04 at 3,000 metres. So they've now drifted. Earlier on, they were running sort of, you know, 1304s, 1305s. They're now on 1320 pace. A great work by our director and all our camera crew just to try and give you a flavour as to how feversome the atmosphere is here. And they're not just cheering for Grant Fisher. They're cheering for the quality of the athletes before them. This is a staggering lineup. It really is. Again, I wasn't sure whether Inga Britson might have been exchanging a word or two with Ibenio there. And he just motioned to him with his right arm. They're running so close together. And this is exactly the kind of scenario where heels get clipped and athletes go down. As... Kip Career looks over his shoulder, wants a little bit of help with the pacemaking. And that, look at this, they're running. Well, Chapter Guy's running almost out in lane three, and they're jostling and bumping each other. As Kip Career goes to the front. And Dan, this is this is turning into the kind of race we saw yesterday, and that worked out brilliantly for the 1500 meter specialist, Gudaf Sege. Is history going to repeat itself? I think that's a rhetorical question, right, Rob? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting you to suddenly give me the one, two, three for the end of the race. But it's interesting, isn't it, that those, those guys who are better at the 10 surely would have watched that race. A 65-second lap, and again, they're getting slower rather than quicker. But surely those who don't feel they've got the raw speed to run a 53.2 on the last lap, it's in their interest to go to the front. And interesting to see Mark Scott of Great Britain just being dropped and the Germans struggling. So it's obviously very, very warm out there. Sam Parsons has drifted off the back of the pace. And Jakob Britson went for a drink. And how about that from Kip Career? Gives Joshua Cheptegei a little shove in the side and says, right, OK, I'm going to get to the front here because if one of us doesn't do something about this, we're playing into the hands of Jakob Britson. And how the Norwegians are desperate for a gold. They assumed he was going to win the 1500. They were hoping Varholm would recover from his hamstring problems to win the four hurdles. Both of them were victorious in Tokyo, but they have not tasted gold yet. And their hopes tonight rest on the young man who, at the age of 21, has done just about everything. He's got world records, he's got the Olympic title, but he'd love a world outdoor crown. Now finds himself at the front. Inga Britson was fifth in this race three years ago. But remember, he was only just a teenager then. And he wasn't as experienced as he is now. The crowd are going absolutely wild round that first bend. So many expatriated Ethiopians here and Kenyans. Inga Britson is looking up. When you see his eyes flick, it's because he can see himself and the rest of the field on the big screen at the end of the stadium. 600 metres to go. Watch for Grant Fisher. He looks full of running on the inside in third place. Cheptegei trying to get himself in a good position on the outside. He went to the front early on, but maybe the weather is a lot hotter than it appears. We're OK in the shade, but it's been brutal out there. They've been reaching for drinks. As they approach the bell, there's a huge amount of noise in the stadium. 400 to go in the 5,000 final, and listen to this. Even Dan O'Brien, the decathlon specialist, is on his feet enthralled by this race. Jakob Britson was embarrassed in the 1500 metres. That's how much he's got used to winning. But they're all queuing up behind the mercurial Norwegian. Jacob Kropp, the second fastest man in the world this year. Cheptegei might be run out of this, the gap's too big. Kip Career is going backwards, Ahmed trying to come through. But Britson's shoulders 
are composed. They're tripping in the background. Grant Fisher got a heel clip. But look at this from Jakob Britson. If you can keep your head when all around are losing theirs, then yours is the world and everything in it. And Jakob Britson proves he is a man tonight. He was bitterly disappointed in the 1500. This is not as strong an event for him. He's only run 1-5,000 this season and hadn't gone inside 13 minutes. He's beaten the Olympic champion over 10,000 metres. He's beaten the Olympic champion over 5,000 metres. And Jakob Britson does finish Eugene as a world champion. What a great, great champion's response to his disappointment from earlier in the week. That was a brilliant performance from a 21-year-old who has rediscovered his magic touch on the last night in Eugene. Great stuff, Inga Britson. Such heart and such determination. He will be the toast of a nation thousands of miles away tomorrow. Wow, Rob, for the second night in a row, another exciting distance race these crowds we saw the the far the far east grandstands weren't very full at the start of this meet because it's so hot over there and i think people were just waiting till the start of this race to fill in in the in the hot section they cheered them all the way around they take such pride in putting these athletes on their shoulders the fans want them to hear them because they know that if the athletes can hear them they're going to give a better performance and that's what happened here tonight Jakob Ingebrigtsen with what I think is the greatest performance of his career, bearing in mind his disappointment in the 15. Krop takes the silver, Chalimo the bronze, Grivalia just missing out on the podium. All credit to the Norwegian.